In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon virtual lesson. So glad that we are able to join each other in this way to spend time in God's Word. You may be using this uh, at work during a break. You may be using this because you were between work schedules and maybe you couldn't make it to a morning service or an evening service or a small group and you're using it that way. Maybe as a family, you're gathered together and you're going to watch this and, and study and learn together. Maybe you're using this as a discussion starter for a small group. And I think those are great ways to use this. And I encourage you, if you're not using it, to use it that way. I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that we do meet in person on Sunday evenings, evenings at 6 o'clock. And would love to see you here with us as we worship God together. We have been looking at defending the faith. We've talked about digging deep into God's Word so that we can defend ourselves. We've talked about building a strong foundation on Christ and on His Word. Not just hearing, but doing. Not just saying, oh, that's good, but putting it into action. And then this morning we talked about having a wall of faithful friends around us that can help us stay faithful, that can protect us, that can provide for us, that can be there for us. We talked about that true friend that is Jesus. And then we challenged ourselves to be the friend that we want to have. How do we do that? That's where this lesson's, this evening's lesson comes in. We learn to love one another. Loving one another. There are a lot of songs in, in the secular world about love. Loving a significant other. Love that's unrequited. There are stories about love. There are songs in e even the world about loving those people around you. About being a friend. And there are songs in the, the Christian songbooks, the Christian hymnals, that talk about love and what love is and loving one another and loving God. But what does love really look like? What's expected of us? The Hebrew writer says this, Hebrews 13 and verse 1, Let love of the brothers continue. Peter says it this way in 1 Peter 1 and verse 22, Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a love of the brothers without hypocrisy, fervently love one another from the heart. John says this in 1 John 4 and verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Love. There's something very important about this loving one another as Christians. What does it look like? What is this love? Well, love is, according to Jesus, a demonstration of discipleship. At its basic core, that's what it is. In John chapter 13, verse 33, he says, Little children, I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, now I also am able to say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even, if I have, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this will all know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It is a demonstration of being a follower of Christ that we love followers of Christ, that we show that compassion, that care, that love. He says that John, excuse me, John says it this way in 1 John 3 and verse 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. The one who does not love abides in death. Love is a demonstration of spiritual life. If we're not showing love to our brothers and sisters in Christ. If we're not showing love to fellow disciples. If we're not loving one another, are we really living spiritual life? Or are we still dead, spiritually speaking? It is, as John says, as we've already seen, a reflection or demonstration 
of our relationship with God. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves has been born of God. He who does not love does not love know God, for God is love. Do we really know, have a relationship with God, if we can't show love that God showed? Love. How does love demonstrate discipleship, spiritual life, and a relationship with God? I think we need to be reminded that it is a characteristic of, of God. We need to be reminded, I should say, of the characteristics of godly love. Look at Romans chapter 13, verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. By abhorring what is evil and clinging to what is good, being devoted to one another in brotherly love, giving preference to one another in honor, not lacking behind in diligence, being fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in affliction, being devoted in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, pursuing hospitality. Godly love is genuine. It's affectionate. It's outperforming. It's fervent. It's patient. It's compassionate. It does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in good. Paul will say that in another book. But it's not that type of love of the world. Godly love is different. It focuses on what is good. Look at Romans 13, verse 8. Owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. For this, you shall not commit adultery, and you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, it is summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not work evil against a neighbor. neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. A characteristic of Godly love is that it is other centered. It's not self serving. It's what we owe each other. Loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, loving the disciples, is our obligation. And it shows that it's genuine, it's affectionate, it's fervent, it's patient. It's compassionate, and it shows honor to the other person and respect to the other person. 1 John 3, 1 John 3, verse 11. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the evil one and slew his brother, and for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not marvel at this. If the world hates you, we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. The one who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we have known love that he, Christ, laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our life for the brothers. Whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and in truth. Godly love is selfless. Godly love is sacrificial. Godly love is visible, it's seen, because it does, it acts lovingly and compassionately and genuinely to the benefit and toward others. I want to look at a few examples of love. I think maybe that will help us see what godly love is like. I want to go to the Old Testament for a couple of these. I want to go to Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. Genesis 13, verse 8 and 9. See if you don't see love in, in this picture. So Abraham said to Lot, 
Please let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. Is it not the whole is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If I go to the left, if you go to the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Do you see Abraham's love for Lot? He's giving Lot the choice. And then he's going to do what he has to do with what's left. In a worldly state, it doesn't make sense. With Abraham, the, the elder statesman, the leader of the family, would give the nephew the choice. But he acted in love toward Lot. Now, we know that Lot's decision wasn't always wise, and we know the results of some of that. But I want to see the love that's there. Do I love people enough to sacrifice? Look at 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. Now it happened when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan cut a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his armor and his sword and his bow and his belt. You see the love for David that Jonathan had? He saw him as, as a kindred spirit, I think is a word we might use. He saw him as, as that brother he wanted, that friend he needed. And in love, he gave his own stuff that was his as, as right as a prince of the nation. But he gave of himself to David. As you continue to read the story of Jonathan and David, you'll see that theme over and over again, this love that they would show and demonstrate for each other in sacrificing for each other in various ways. That's the love that's godly love. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 16. Paul says, The Lord gave mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he was in Rome, he eagerly searched for me and found me. The Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you know very well what services he rendered at Ephesus. Paul says, You want to see love in action? Though he doesn't use those words, He's telling us, you look at Onesiphorus. You look at how he loved me, how he, he, he was not embarrassed of the fact that I was in prison. In fact, I was in prison and he came and he sought me out to make sure everything was okay. And by the way, you also know what he did for the church in Ephesus. You, you want to know what love is? Paul tells Timothy, look at Onesiphorus and tell everyone else about him. So they learn to love. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 9, Paul uses these words. Now concerning love of the brothers, you have no need for anyone to write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed, you do practice it toward all the brothers who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to excel still more. I share that because you may be saying, well, I do love people. I do give, I do help, I, I am loving. And I would say, great, wonderful, fantastic. That's who we're supposed to be. But I would say to you the same thing that Paul is saying to the Thessalonians, the same thing he's saying to me, and the same thing I'm saying to me. Great. Do better. Do more. Be more loving. Be more friendly so that we can surround ourselves with a wall of faithful friends, so that when the attacks of the enemy come, and they will, we have people standing side by side, back to back, facing the enemy and warding off the attack. I need you. You need me. So we can fight 
together for what is right. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the love that you showed us in sending your Son. We thank you for the love that is seen in the good news, the gospel, the grace that is the salvation we have through him. Father, we thank you for your love, and we ask that you help us to learn to love like you love. And to show that love to our brothers and sisters so that we can stand side by side and back to back to face the enemy head on. Father, sometimes it gets difficult to live a life in a world that seems to be against us. But Father, I'm thankful for friends who have been there when I needed them. And Father, I pray that I have been there when my friends needed me and that we will all grow in our love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to spend this time with you. I look forward to these lessons. Hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. Me home here in the power.